in a 16th century Scottish castle, the overbearing Los Angeles Chicano who rarely says his name without attaching the appellation, the Trillion Dollar Man, is berating 24 students, each of whom paid $30,000 for the privilege. Dan Pena, who turned 76 this year but remains a commanding presence at 6 foot 1, erupts into an expletive-infested lecture that careens between withering insults and strategies to become like him, successful in business and in life. Quoting him requires lots of bleeping. You, you in this room, he begins in a videotape lesson, you're taking your bleeping foot off the accelerator instead of pushing the gas pedal through the bleeping floorboard. And we all know why. It's easier, Pena adds, shaking his head in exasperation, and it's hard to admit you have no bleeping self-esteem. With supreme confidence and politically incorrect bluster, Pena prods and pokes his students to transform them into hard-working entrepreneurs with skin as tough as rhino hide beneath tailored business suits. It's not lost on his students that the location, Guthrie Castle, in the golfing heartland of Angus, Scotland, is not a conference center. It's his home, and when he's not delivering blistering lectures, the greying Pena lives a relatively quiet Scottish-led existence. It's all so improbable. Pena seemed bound for failure through his difficult youth in East Los Angeles and the San Fernando Valley until he did something Americans do best. He reinvented himself. Pena would reap a fortune in the oil industry and develop a sharply opinionated conservative nature that reflects not merely his gotta-keep-busy-to-get-rich personality, but also his us-against-them contempt for sniveling, lazy, entitled and easily offended types who long for public approval and run for the hills when things get rough. Not many outside of the oil industry knew his name until 1983, when Pena was featured in a Times story about a tiny number of Chicanos de Oro, wealthy Mexican-Americans on their way to megafortunes. Pena is a dream of ethnic alchemy, columnist Al Martinez wrote in the article that was part of a Pulitzer-winning series on Latinos. Tough, smart and demanding to be heard, even his quick, flashing smile is noisy, Pena seemed destined to be rich. At that time, Pena was bidding to buy a refinery and petroleum terminal. If the oil refinery deal goes through, he said, I could either be rich beyond belief or lose everything. But you've got to dare. I won't be picked on. I'm not a victim of the sombrero syndrome. Don't try walking on Dan Pena. The man who would own a castle started life in a modest wood-framed house in a barrio just north of downtown. His mother, Amy, of Austrian and Spanish descent, was from Mexico, and gave her son blue eyes. His father, Manuel, who was from New Mexico, wore pistols in leather holsters, one on each hip, and became one of the first Mexican-American detectives in the Los Angeles Police Department.